Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! For years, a well-known spectacles company has been using the phrase should have gone to Specsavers in its advertising. The phrase has entered everyday use. And now the company wants to trademark the use of should have with an apostrophe and should have without an apostrophe, if you can imagine such a thing. Tanya Clark is a trademark attorney at Withers and Rogers. How can a company trademark a word that's in everyday use? It is a little surprising, but this application was filed uh, just over a month ago and duly accepted by the UK examiner. The application was filed for the usual goods and services which you'd associate with spec savers, such as eyewear, optician services, hearing aids. But they did also include uh, another class of goods, which covers printed matter. And this would also cover greeting cards, writing paper and goods like that. So effectively, if it goes through registration, they'll have a monopoly which they can renew in perpetuity because that's what trademark registration is all about. They last for 10 years and then you renew them uh, for all of those goods and services. So it means uh, what in practical terms for, I don't know, for, for the company's rivals, for example? It means that um, anybody who tries to use the word should have on its own for any of those goods and services could be sued for trademark infringement by Specsavers. And do you think they should have? <laughs> Uh, they, it is, uh, it is a very surprising decision, but uh, having said that, they have started using it on its own. They've extrapolated the word should have from their complete strap line. This isn't the first time it's happened. Carlsberg did the same thing with their long strap line. Carlsberg, probably the best lager in the world. They took out the word probably and registered that on its own. Uh, Nestle have registered just have a break and not their full strap line, have a break, have a Kit Kat. So there's a bit of history behind it, but not many examples of just a single word being registered, especially just a common verb. And now I'm hungry and thirsty. Um, can anybody stop this? Could rival companies appeal if they read the small print? There is this uh, two months window of opportunity. It was advertised on the 12th of August. So for two months, in other words, until the 12th of October, uh, third parties, any third party, whether competitor or not, could file an opposition object to that application. If there's no such objection, it'll go through to registration and uh, spec savers will be sent the certificate of registration. And I'm, I'm guessing that uh, around the, the UK, the, the boys and girls in marketing for lots of companies might be looking at this thinking, hey, hang on a second, what, what can we trademark? I think that's exactly what's going to happen with the pressure of social media and having to get your key messages across in a very succinct way. Uh, with tweeting being restricted to 140 characters, the pressure is on to come up with very short brands. So, and strap lines, by their very nature, tend to be quite long. So, I think that all the marketing departments are going to start looking at their slogans and deciding whether there are key words which they could start using and trying to associate in consumers' minds with the product or with their house mark without actually using their brand. And I suppose an upside of this um, for Withers and Rogers and other trademark companies, it's, it's good news. It's very good news. <laughs> <laughs> and to be encouraged, says Tanya Clark, trademark attorney at Withers and Rogers. Thank you. Thank you.